In this video, we're going to show you how to import the clean and paint finish from Tecla Structures into Tecla EPM. Okay, so I'm going to start out here in Tecla Structures and I'm going to explain how the finish field is defined, which finish usually means clean and paint or just paint, and how we're going to export that to Tecla EPM. Well, by default, when we look at the job, um, we're essentially going to look at what is the most common finish on the project. And let's say that the job is going to get a standard primer and SP2 for the clean. So if we come up here to the Tecla menu and go underneath the project properties, we will then go to user defined attributes. What a lot of detailers use when they use the out of the box templates and stuff inside of Tecla or the out of the box drawing settings and title blocks, essentially they'll come in here and they'll put the clean and paint or just the paint in this project standard paint field. And so this is kind of like a, this is the paint for the job and the clean for the job unless noted otherwise. Now, the unfortunate thing is that by default, this does not export out to Tech EPM. So you actually have to modify the reports in order to get this to export if you wanted to. So I just wanted you to see though, however, that this is the typical place that most detailers put the standard paint for the project. And then they'll do specific finishes on individual parts or drawings. Now, one other thing here is that there is a title block um, style and preview. Now, out of the box with the US environment, um, you know, for especially for new Tecla users or smaller Tecla users that aren't familiar with how to customize uh, drawing title blocks and templates, there are these five out of the box styles. I fully recommend this, um, you know, to, to decrease the amount of time to, to customize things and mess around with things. I typically try to point people to pick one of these five styles, put the customer or the fabricator's logo on there and all the rules and everything are set inside of here to work. Now, I just happen to like this style number five uh, because it does, it is fairly compact like height wise, which gives me more room on the drawings, but it also has this project paint on it, which we can see here. And so that default paint from the project level will show up. Whereas the style one that's uh, set by default, it doesn't show any of that, um, which, which isn't really good um, from a showing everything I need on the shop drawings. So I'm gonna go ahead and say modify and okay. So I have a standard clean uh, paint and I've set a drawing title block here to display that information. So let's actually go into a drawing and we'll take a look at that. So if I open up this beam drawing here, we're gonna see that um, if I come down here to the title block in the bill of material, the standard paint uh, being used for this uh, beam is SB2 and then standard primer. And then again, unless noted otherwise. And then here we have a part, uh, which is basically that shelf angle, which is galvanized. And that's been set in the finish field in the model. So essentially, if I were the fabricator reading this shop drawing, I would say that, hey, this whole assembly is supposed to get standard primer with an SB2 clean, except for this shelf angle here uh, and this submaterial part, which needs to be galvanized first. So let's go take a look at where that is actually set in the model. If I come in here back into this beam um, and we inquire on the assembly, we'll see that all of these parts are shop attached together, including this shelf angle. So if I click on this, you'll see at the upper right hand corner, there's the word uh, galv uh, put in here. You can put galvanize the full word, whatever you want. And essentially, uh, this basically uh, tells it that in the bill of material that I need to tag that galvanized there because something has been filled in. Whereas nothing else has been filled in for like, you know, the other parts on that assembly. Now, one other thing that I like to do um, in the model is when you set the, the specific no paint or galvanized or, or non-standard paints in the model, um, essentially you can colorize the model by that. So I'm going to go to representation here in my view properties and I created a rule set here called color by finish and see right there. And this is not out of the box. I just created these rules real quick. So here basically I'm just saying if the part finish equals uh, or contains galv as a prefix or GLV for the name, then this uh, rule will be true and it'll set the model to a certain color. So I'm gonna go ahead and modify that. And you'll see that now the shelf angle turns red and then um, basically the anchor rods are no paint. So they all turn blue. And then here the rest of the steel is blue because I haven't set any of that field. So when I haven't set anything here in the model, essentially the assumption is that that standard project level uh, clean and paint that I set here back in the project properties. So just as a reminder, if everything is blue, that means no specific user defined attribute or finish has been set. And so then essentially this is the clean and paint that should be used for those assemblies and is what will show up on the drawings. Now, let me explain the problem with this philosophy. 
is if I hold down Alt and I select the entire assembly here, um, you'll see that only one part is galvanized and the other pieces don't have anything set. Even though on the drawing, we know that we want this to be SP2 clean and uh, you know standard primer. So if I go to reports after selecting these parts, we're gonna scroll down and find the Tecla EVM part report, okay? And when I create from selected, this again is the report that uh, the EPM export plugin runs in order to send data into the Tecla EPM package. If I scroll over here to the right, there, we're gonna see that there's a finish field that gets written out. Now, all the other parts are empty except for this one that has uh, the finish set, which is set at Galv. And so that means that none of the other parts are gonna be able to tell upon importing the EPM that they need to be painted. So this is where you can do a couple of things. Um, first thing is, is that you can say, let's go ahead and grab all those parts and let's set them uh, to have that, that, that finish status, right? So we can come in here and we could put SP2 and we could put like, you know, standard primer. Okay. And so typically what the detailer would do is they would, they would probably put that in there on that part. Um, or they might, if we want to keep to this, uh, you know, the standard codes that are inside of Techly PM, which I'm going to show you in a second, we could do a PNT for painted or paint. Um, and then basically here, I've got the rule to colorize that. So that's the main part of the assembly. It is a little bit painful, just so you guys know, for the detailer to kind of set all the parts on the assembly, especially if connections change and things like that. Um, but here, most detailers are used to just setting things on the main part of the assembly because then that's going to appear inside of the drawing. So I'm going to go ahead and update this drawing here after I made that change and I want to show you what's actually happening. So now what we'll see here is the PNT or painted here is in the main part and it's in the remarks and then it is separate from the actual title block that I've set here. Okay. And so this is basically, you know, how I can tell in Tech EPM that this has been painted. So let's go back out to the model. And if I wanted all of the parts to be set so I could filter all of those pieces uh, that are painted or not, then what I would need to do is I would need to do Alt and select all these. I will deselect the galvanized one. And then I'm just gonna change this finish field here to paint it on all these. And then I will modify and now everything on that assembly turns green. So now watch this. If I go back again to the drawing, we'll perform a numbering to update since we made a change in the model. And here we can see that now everything is noted as PNT. So this is kind of a little bit like, uh, I don't know, a little bit messy in my mind, but this is how you can get it to work without customizing the reports in any way. So that way every single part on the assembly is tagged with the paint code or the galvanized or no paint code. And then that data will come across the tech VPM. So watch this. So let's go back out to the model. We will highlight everything in that assembly again. So Alt to select the assembly. We'll then go to reports. We'll scroll down and we'll find that Techly EPM part report. We'll say create from selected. And now we're gonna see the Galv and we will see also all of the painted uh, basically attribute as well. So that data is gonna come across in the Techly EPM. Now I'm gonna intentionally change this to something else that's non-standard um, in EPM. And so I'm just gonna say SP6 red oxide as an example, just something to be different. We'll modify that. So the color goes away because I've changed to something outside of my colorization rules, a different value. But I wanna show you a non-standard value that doesn't map to a default finish in EPM, so that way you can see exactly what happens. So hopefully this explains kind of the default out of the box of sort of how do you get the data um, set inside of Tecla structures, how it appears on the shop drawing title blocks and in the bill material, um, how you can colorize that in the model. And now we're gonna showcase how do we get that over into Tecla EPM. Okay, so over here on the Tecla EPM side, I'm gonna go to File, Import. I will go to Production Control XML. I'll then browse to the package we just created from Tecla structures. And uh, we'll go ahead and say Import. Now I'm gonna go ahead and import into this uh, default job here, um, which I'd already created. And I'm gonna just say, um, delete the existing job and re-import from all. And um, we should be good, yep, I'll say yes to this. Now by default here, here's the mappings. And it's interesting because the finish field does not show up here by default. It looks like it automatically maps um, by default here under the hood. 
And so I'm just going to say OK and skip over explaining any of those mappings for those properties. And uh, we just won't save this. Now, here's what happens, right? So you saw me set that sort of non-standard um, kind of uh, finish field that is not already set up inside of Tech VPM. So I want it to create a new one. If I go to the dropdown, you'll see all the ones that are out of the box. So you can either create a new one or you can map it to essentially be that when it sees this SB6 red oxide, it would go to one of the default ones that are out of the box um, and, and that are currently set up. So you could switch this to PNT for painted or um, you could just say, okay, and it's gonna add a new one. So add uh, SB6 red oxide, I'm just gonna say yes. And then basically here, um, you know, the drawing already exists, so I'm gonna go ahead and say overwrite all, that's fine. And there we go. So now watch this, if I go to uh, maintenance, and then I go to production control, there is a finished maintenance option. And when I open that up, we'll see now that there's an SB6 red oxide that has now been added. Again, you could choose not to do that or, or, or not, um, but essentially if there's something coming from the detailer that does need to be added, like a custom paint or something special and the shop needs to know that and you need to be able to filter by it, then you can easily add those here. Um, and now if we go to production control, we'll go to this specific job here then I'll take a look at the bill of materials. And uh, basically, if we look over here on the right-hand side, we can see the finish has been uh, set for this. And so if we again go to each of the individual parts, um, you'll see that, uh, for instance, galvanizing has been set on that shelf angle. And then here I've got painted, painted on all the other parts here. So again, you know, I, as a fabricator, you, you you know, do you want all of the sub, do you need all of the submaterial parts if the main part on the assembly is gonna be something? Do you need all the submaterial uh, parts to be set? That's up to you for filtering and for part tracking, et cetera, um, because the paint option uh, or the paint actually happens when the assembly is, you know, all fabricated and welded together, uh, typically, except for this galvanized part. But here, what's handy is that I do have a submaterial piece that is galvanized. You can filter by this finish field and this finish value. And so that way you can organize and route uh, basically parts based on this information here. So this is essentially how you can get the uh, clean and paint in the finish field and techless structures over into Techly EPM. If you found this content useful, please subscribe to our channel and press the alerts button to be notified when we upload new content.